Good morning, British literature scholars, and welcome to week number 10. We are now in the double digits. Has, does it really feel like it's been 10 weeks to you? Um, not to me. It just seems like uh, this semester's flying by and leaving me with the question, where is all the time gone? Um, okay, so uh, a couple things I need to uh, talk about in this video. First of all, you'll see that in the printed syllabus, it says uh, the MLA and research quizzes are due by this coming Sunday, or actually by last Sunday which was yesterday, March the 8th. Um, that, of course, has been changed. Remember, there, at the beginning of this schedule, I have a disclaimer that says uh, uh, the D2L calendar will always supersede this calendar, so check it regularly. So on the D2L calendar, and it's been like this all semester, uh, this MLA quiz doesn't occur until sometime in April. So, in fact, I'll go ahead and let you know it's April the... Uh, uh, somewhere about mid-April it's going to be due. So... Uh, we will do the uh, research quiz and the MLA quiz when you're doing your research papers, which is the way uh, I had always wanted it to be. Uh, there was some confusion um, at the beginning of the semester. Uh, the powers that be told me I had to have this quiz done by March the 8th. Um, I didn't agree with it, but of course I acquiesced to their authority. And then after I'd already printed these schedules up and made copies for all my in-class and all that stuff, uh, I was told, oh, by the way, you can give that quiz whenever you want. So I am. So the MLA quiz and the research quiz won't be until April. So a couple of you sent me some panicked emails over the weekend to which I have just said, hey, don't worry about it. Um, so uh, be aware of that. So what do you have to do this week? Well, you've only got one reading. It's about a, uh, it's about a 25 page reading, but it's a good one. It's The Man Who Would Be King by Rudyard Kipling. And this is a story that plays into the imperialism theme because it's about two ne'er-do-wells who actually uh, go off into Kafiristan, which is in current day Afghanistan, and uh, manage to unite some of the tribes and become their king. Um, and this works well for a while, but eventually it has negative repercussions when the natives actually rebel against them. And uh, these two men will never be the same again. So, uh, this is kind of a story that Kipling wrote that reflects British imperialism and the fact that the British were able to unite all these tribes in India and were able to uh, take over and be the ruling power, but eventually the natives would rebel and there would be negative consequences both for the natives and for uh, the British as well. So this is kind of a cautionary tale. I think you'll find it very entertaining. Um, there's all kinds of funny moments in this. Other things I want you to look at, and if you look at the uh, questions, they'll actually make this clear. One of the things I want you to look at is the role that Freemasonry plays in this. Freemasonry is hard to describe because it is such a secretive society. And there are special codes and handshakes and uh, ceremonial gestures and such that only Freemasons know in which they um, are talking about their brotherhood. So it turns out that uh, our two main characters in this, Daniel and Peachy, have some knowledge of Freemasonry. And they use this to their advantage in order to convince the... Uh, natives in Kafiristan that they are gods and this is a um, an interesting uh, detail Freemasonry started off as like a trade guild of bricklayers essentially that had specific standards in which they would actually work and specific standards to the buildings that they would build but it was so secretive that you had to be invited into the Freemasonry and uh, you had to learn each uh, level, there's like 32 levels of Freemasonry that you had to learn as you were deemed worthy of going up to the next level. Freemasons still exist, by the way. There are still Masonic temples all over the world, and it is still a secretive society. You still have to be invited in, but um, it's, um, it's the way that the Freemasonry is used to take over here that um, I have a lot of people kind of parallels the way that uh, people say that there's a new world order coming and that there are secret societies that are put in this new world order that's going to make one world government and uh, the uh, Freemasons have been accused of being a part of that. Uh, rightfully or wrongly, they have been accused of it. Uh, so take a look at the role the Freemasonry plays. Also look at the other questions. Notice how um, guns are used as a way to uh, put fear into the natives and then they are used to rule the natives. Uh, also, uh, the role that Daniel and Peachy play as gods, you know, the way they make these people think that they're not just human, but they're gods. And that will backfire on them towards the end. 
In fact, just that backfiring of this whole gods thing, when the um, natives realize that these two are human, that are going to bring about the violent end that they're going to meet. So, um, look at the discussion questions. Look through my slideshow on D2L. I have a Rudyard Kipling slideshow that actually goes into more detail about what I want you to look for in this story. And um, I think you'll find it entertaining. And you only have one posting, which is great. Now, you also have the Victorian exam, which will be due next Sunday. As of right now, I'm recording this at about 6.30 on Monday morning. I have not quite finished it yet. Um, it will be posted by this afternoon. So since most of you probably won't watch this video until after you get off work anyway, um, you, you, have, you probably won't be affected by my tardiness here. If you're one of those that wanted to take it early this morning, just read The Man Who Would Be King and work on the discussion first. Um, I also have every intention of sending you out another study sheet like I did for the uh, romanticism exam. So um, I will have that posted once this exam is done. I do know it will be 50 questions. I do know that it will be uh, 30 general knowledge questions and 20 uh, quotations. Um, and your, your exam should say this, and I'll go ahead and repeat it. In the direct quotations, every source that we've read in this uh, Victorian period of the semester will be uh, quoted from and all of them will only be quoted from once, except for uh, this week's reading, which is The Man Who Would Be King. So th that should help you as you're going through the quotations part, say, okay, um, I'm stuck here, but I haven't seen this source yet, but I have seen these two, so I know these two are eliminated, so it's just uh, this one source. So that can help you on the Victorian exam. Again, I expect to have that posted by dinner time this evening, and uh, you should be able to access it. I'm going to say no later than about 6 o'clock um, this evening. So, and that, of course, by this evening, I mean Monday evening. So if you're not watching this till Tuesday or Wednesday anyway, you're not affected. Um, finally, these postings, I have graded them. I'm caught up on the postings grading. Some of you still aren't doing them. If you're not doing your postings, remember, I am failing every posting that's more than two weeks late. So if you've not posted a posting yet and we're in week 10, that means you've got eight weeks of failing postings that you need to get caught up on. Those of you that are staying caught up, and there are many of you that are, um, thank you so much for doing that. It makes my life easier, and it should make your grade better. So uh, keep that in mind also. So that's it. That's all I have for this week. So this week, uh, the MLA quiz has been postponed until April. Uh, the Man Who Would Be King is our only reading and the only thing you have to do a posting on. And uh, you have the Victorian exam, which will be due by next Sunday, and it will shut off at midnight next Sunday night, you know, when... Sunday becomes Monday, and so you won't be able to take it after that time. So make sure you get that in. Uh, for the Romanticism uh, S exams, many of you did very, very well. This, this Victorian exam will be formatted almost exactly like it. So um, uh, look for the study sheet. I'll put it in email, and I'll put it in the assignment instructions uh, to help you prepare for this Victorian exam. And uh, I really think you're going to enjoy this week's Rudyard Kipling reading. I, I really, it's one of my favorite readings of the whole semester. And I think you're going to like it too. And so uh, on that note, we shall uh, uh, say adieu for now. And if you have any questions, email me or contact me by phone or drop by my office during my office hours.